Look at this. Business Insider. A respectable journalistic outlet. Anti-capitalist financial planner explains how to make ethically sound investments. Asking an anti-capitalist about investments is like asking a vegan how to cook your steak. Why would I do that? And uh, yesterday, Trump had a speech about uh, blue-haired teachers. He said that uh, he finds the issue concerning. And other people on Twitter were like, oh my God, so now you can't dye your hair in whatever color you want? I don't think it was about the hair, though. I think um, it was about the ideology. But anyway, we have uh, this individual, uh, River Nice, age 30, believes many of the traditional methods of getting rich under capitalism is unethical. So this gentleman is going to suggest to you how to only do ethical ways of uh, getting rich. And I'm sitting here and thinking, getting rich is actually quite difficult. There aren't that many ways available. So let's say that you have 10 opportunities in your lifetime to get rich. So what this gentleman does is it comes to you and says, all right, well, we're going to remove six of those opportunities. You now only have four. What a brilliant business strategy. I'm really glad that Business Insider is bringing this to my attention. Instead of leaning on the stock market, real estate investments, or passive income schemes, the anti-capitalist advises clients on how to engage in ethical investments to reach their financial goals. Yes, yeah, so in other words, uh, don't do what it's working, okay? Do something else. The strategy often means avoiding investments that support the fossil fuel industry, private prisons, or border control agencies. So in other words, if you have a huge crime spike and you foresee that at some point someone is going to crack down on crime and you're like, well, I I guess like private prisons might be... No, leave the criminals alone. The criminals need to be free in order to terrorize the population. How dare you try to lock them up? says the anti-capitalist. Border control agencies, what is that? Horrible. Let them all in. Every single Russian from Russia should be able to come to the United States. No borders donation. Bah. It might involve redistribution of wealth to people who need it. Yes, like when I want to get rich, the first thing I want to think about is redistribution of wealth. There was another gentleman who did that. He is a source of endless inspiration to me. So David Hogg looked at the world one day and he said you know what i don't like that pillow guy that pillow guy is a bad person i am going to make that pillow guy life difficult and you know what he did david hogg started his own pillow company and the first thing that he said is like he wants wealth redistribution uh he wants to be nice to the workers he's going to do this and like a lot of um, ethical planning i believe he managed to bankrupt it in less than a year. And then he had to sell the company to someone else. Right, it, it, it turns out that capitalism, like making wealth is important if you want to pay the workers. But anyway. There are some compromises, he says. But uh, you can't do everything because capitalism and white supremacy uh, and patriarchy are all completely intertwined and oppressive structures. Man, every structure is oppressive if you think about it. Like immigration. The people from Martha's Vineyard would feel oppressed if you build an immigration center literally in their vineyard. I mean, we saw that already. I mean, how how many did they got? They got like 50 and immediately the military was summoned. So their idea is like, don't oppress us, but please oppress someone else. The climate crisis, right? Like we need to reorganize society. We need to ban the gas stove. Okay, you're oppressing the people who want the gas stove. Because you're telling them they can't... You're oppressing people that want cars. Like, every single structure is going to have oppression. You you cannot run a society without some people not getting what they want. Even if I live in a small apartment building and I want to play music at 2 a.m., 
Either my neighbor gets to sleep or I don't get to play. One of us is getting oppressed. A rising majority of young adults are critical of capitalism. Yes, because they do not understand how the world works. Like these people legitimately believe that food sprouts from the supermarket. That electricity just manifests itself through the walls like the Holy Spirit. You, if, if they do not even understand basic stuff, Joe Biden himself mocked the American people in an interview saying like, who understands logistics? And I can't take that away from him because he's absolutely right. Yeah, like ask a random American, where does the stuff come from? He probably has no idea. So if you do not understand how the world works, no wonder you have videos like that previous TikTok lady, which says that she doesn't want to work, she wants to have fun. And she doesn't even think about the fact that, oh, she wants to travel because she doesn't need to work. But like when she's traveling, a pilot has to carry her ass in a plane. Uh, a flight attendant needs to make sure that she's comfortable. When she gets off, a taxi driver needs to carry her luggage. And, and when she enters a hotel, she's got staff that needs to take care of all her needs. Right? This is what it means to do what you want. It means other people have to work for you. You know, those people probably want to have fun too, but, well, someone doesn't get to have fun, unfortunately. The current system that we're having works quite well. You know, everyone gets to take their turn in having fun. But anyway, right, so, they're talking about the housing affordability crisis, but at the same time, they, they want to take away from the border agents. I, I, I would really love to understand the math here, right? Like, it's so fucking simple. More people require more housing. Right, but the houses do not sprout out from the ether, especially in the United States where you have like homeowner associations. I recently made a video about a famous basketball player who is very left-leaning, supports the Democrats, supports all of these ethical policies until an affordable housing was about to be built in his backyard. And all of a sudden he doesn't support that anymore because <clears throat> the way the world works, unfortunately, in a society, some people will be oppressed. The question is, like, who gets to be oppressed? And every single time you see that socialists, they run out of envy. Right? Like they're looking at the very top, like the, the few successful people in society, which are usually a couple of percentage, and they want that. Okay, They don't want to change the system or break the wheel or uh, create... No, like they are envious. They want what rich people have so they can oppress others. Because the solutions that they are proposing is definitely not something to end oppression. It's either to make life miserable for everyone, so that by comparison they're not as miserable as they used to be, or so that they can gain power and become the ones that are doing the oppression. This is another thing that uh, annoys me. Uh, investments like stocks and real estate rather than a salary, and therefore to avoid the typical income tax. So you literally get like this person who's telling you, you know, you have legal loopholes in order not to pay your taxes, which are legal. Right? Like, you, you can do all these legal things so you pay less taxes. And he's like, no, that's not ethical. Pay your fucking tax. And it's kind of interesting because when you look at it, the government knows that there are legal loopholes. So they increase the tax rate because they don't get enough money to the budget. So they kind of expect people to use those legal loopholes in order to pay less tax. Being someone who wants to help people with money, to help people. But my God, like money is the most important thing in life for these socialists. They believe that it is unethical, arguing that workers often don't earn incomes in proportion to the profits they make for companies. My fucking god. Do you know how much this pisses me off? Holy shit. I'm making a video game now, right? Like, at least I'm at the early stages of trying to make a video game. I reckon this project may end up costing around twenty to $30,000. Will probably take more than one year to develop. And then I'm looking at the costs. I will have to pay around 30% to Steam. A publisher probably takes around 10 to 20%. And then you also have the Romanian government coming in. And they also take a percentage from what's left. At the end of the day, you're lucky if you manage to have like 30% of what you sold. And that is if the game sells, because the game can also not sell and then you lose all that. Now imagine if I had to pay percentages to literally everyone that I hire. So I hire an artist to draw art. And I have to pay him percentages of the game. I have to hire a coder to code the game. I have to pay him percentage as well. Right? So basically, I'm the one that comes up with the capital. I'm the one that 
has struggled in order to either make a bank loan for, for me to be able to pay for this, or I have gathered enough resources until I have what it takes to start the project. I'm the one that has to take the risk if it doesn't sell. And I'm also the one that's the most involved, right? Because like I have to find the artists, I have to do all of these things. I have to talk with them, you know, make sure that everything uh, is running smoothly and, and all the components are fitting together. So I have to do all of this. If you were in a system where people just got flat percentages, why would anyone ever want to start a business then? Because th th there's just no more reason, right, for an individual. Like maybe if you're a group of people, then you can start a business. But even then... If you're a group of people, why would you want to hire anyone? Because, like, the moment you hire someone, you hire the cleaning lady, she needs a percentage. Right? You, you hire someone to wash the windows, they need a percentage. Or you're just going to not hire people and just subcontract. And I guess, like, this is how the, the actual world would be like, right? Like, everyone is being a, a subcontractor. Like, you're, you're getting 